Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about a topic in data science that is widely, widely used and extremely powerful, but I think also often misunderstood. Today we're going to be talking about embeddings. So I first want you to imagine that you are a nature lover. You may not have to imagine, maybe you already are one. But you visit your local library and you pick up a book that looks really interesting to you about natural history. You're fully engrossed in this book. You're learning about the ancient settlers of Stats Island and how their hearts were captured by the native whales and parrots that live there. You learn about the ancient probabilites and how they subsisted on a hearty diet of kale and carrots. As you're reading this book, the data science side of your brain catches up with the nature lover part of your brain. And you start wondering, hmm, what if I was able to come up with a numeric representation for each word I'm reading in this book? If we were able to successfully do that, it opens up a whole world of possibilities at the intersection of nature and data science. We can do things like look at the numeric representation, also called vectors, also called embeddings, for a word like whale, and look at which other words have embeddings that are similar, close, low distances away from the embedding for whale, and in doing so, create clusters or topics of similar things as they appear in this book you're reading. We can move on to even more complex things like passing these embeddings for each word into a machine learning model that's trying to do some kind of prediction. And so you start thinking, how would I do this? You take a really simple crack at it. You look at the text of the book exactly as it's written. And if words appear close to each other in the book, in the same sentence, for example, then you take the randomly initialized vectors or embeddings for those words and move them slightly closer to each other. If you see again those two words appear close to each other later in the book, you get more evidence that they should be similar and you move them even closer together. And so on and so on and so on. And eventually you get exactly what you want. You get an embedding for each of the words that is in this book, such that words that appear close to each other, like whales and parrots, because they're both animals, are close together. And words that are similar to each other, but not similar to whale or parrot, like carrot and kale, also appear close to each other, but in a different part of the embedding space. And now here's where the common misconception of embedding comes in, including something that I had a misconception about when I first started learning about embeddings. When I first started learning about them, it seemed like there was only one way to do it. Given the word whale, there's some numeric representation for that word whale. But that could not be further from the truth. The more and more I worked on data science problems, the more I realized that embeddings aren't these static truths that exist in the world, but rather intentionally made to be these dynamic representations who are well suited to whatever the problem is you're trying to solve at the moment. To make that a little bit more clear, let's retell the whole story above. You're not a nature lover anymore, but you're an avid aspiring poet. So instead, when you go to the library, you don't pick up a nature book. You pick up a book on history's greatest poems. You read these amazing verses written by a seafaring pirate who is obsessed with whales and kale. You sob over the deep words of an elderly woman recounting her childhood full of carrots and parrots. Now, if you instead use the closeness between words in this book to come up with your embeddings in the same way you did before, you're going to get a complete 180 in terms of the embeddings you come up with and which ones are closer to which other ones. Because of the rhyming nature of poems, you're going to get words that rhyme appear a lot closer together so that parrot and carrot appear close to each other using this as your data source and whale and kale appear close to each other. So the main takeaway from this video is just that embeddings are just numerical representations of anything. We talked today about words in a language because that's a really popular use case, but you can embed pretty much any real life object that you have sources of information about. It could be words in a language, it could be dishes in a restaurant, it could be students in a school. And these embeddings can be small if you don't need a super rich representation of this object, or it could be massive if you do need that rich representation. But the most, the most important aspect of embeddings is the one we covered in this video, which is that there is not a fixed embedding for any given entity in the world. It really depends on the problem you are trying to solve. And the way you come up with these embeddings is going to be intimately tied to that. So if you like this video or want to learn even more about embeddings, Leave a like and subscribe below. Leave any comments below on questions or suggestions you have for the future. And I'll see you next time.